I talked all about my macros, my calories, everything I am eating from a quantitative standpoint in terms of the numbers. But many of you guys are wondering, what the hell does that actually mean? What does that actually entail? And in the past, whenever I would do contest preps, I'd always do full day of eatings. That's fine and all, but to be honest, there's a lot of problems with that because number one, let's be honest, that is a little bullshitty. Bull bullshit, bullshitty. Whenever anybody is going to film a full day of eating, they know at the back of their minds, today, you know, I have to be on my best behavior essentially, and there's a much higher chance that they're going to stick to their macros, eat much more clean, just overall, but it's not a real insight into actually how you eat on a day-to-day -day basis. And the other problem is it's that it's not that much you know, food. It's like, what, three, maybe four meals? So what I was thinking is instead, why don't I just show you like, 20 meal examples. I've actually been kind of sporadically filming my lunch, dinner, breakfast, you name it, over the past month or so. And today I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through a few of those examples. But before we actually do that, I actually wanna talk, before we talk about meals, I wanna talk about groceries. Yesterday I went shopping, I went to Walmart, and I picked up a bunch of stuff. And I wanna walk you guys through a few of my, sort of like my diet staples. First things first, this I am in love with. These are, stringless sugar snap peas. Essentially, they are like these little simple peas, but the nice thing about them is that you don't need to peel them, you can just you can just snack on them. This is an awesome snack because it's also a little sweet, so sometimes when I'm craving something sweet, I can have these, and the calorie density is tiny. Like, it fills this entire bowl, so I'll have that, I'll have like a diet Sprite, and that's it. It's gonna help a lot with eating that as opposed to going and eating like a donut or a box of cookies or some other crap that I may be craving. Another food on kind of on that same thought is lots of rice cakes. I especially get the caramel one. Again, just simple foods that are going to take up a decent amount of space in your stomach and it's going to be something you can just kind of just mindlessly sit and snack on. Like right now I'm watching like Star Wars and I was just sitting there and I had like three or four of these. And that's a lot easier because even then it's only like 150, 200 calories depending on how many you have. It's sweet. Again, it crushes those cravings and it's not you reaching for, I don't know, like chocolate bars, donuts, ice cream, just stuff that's going to be a lot smaller but have like double or triple the calories. It's almost like essentially you need like the lesser of two evils. In this case, the evil would be like carbs, calories, and sugar. I'm, I know some people are going to be like, oh my god, Igor, stop referring to stuff as evil. You're you're giving us a, a negative connotation, a negative relationship with food. Shut the fuck up, okay? Sugar, not good when you're dieting. It's not rocket science. <laughs> Point is, I would rather have this than, again, all like the crappy stuff. Uh, next up we got, I've been really enjoying, so I always use rice as a carb source. Probably my two main carb sources would be got, we got rice and we also got, come here, but we got sweet potatoes. However, these are kind of a pain in the ass to cook because like, look at this thing. It takes like 30 minutes or like more in the oven or the air fryer or boiling. It's all crap, even the microwave and then it doesn't taste that good. So besides that, probably my number one source of carbohydrates and side dishes would be rice. Now, I do have, I've got like this massive sushi rice, which is usually my go-to. I'm a big fan of sushi rice. However, there's a few problems with that besides the fact that it takes too long to make. But a really big benefit to these is that it's portion control. I'm a big fan of anything that comes in individual packages, individual sizes, because I know that one of these is about 230 calories, so I just pop one of these into the microwave, and that's it, that's my side dish. No more, no less. If I really need more, I'll have two, but honestly, that almost never happens. Portion control is a lot easier, as opposed to, unfortunately, when I was using this, I'd make like a big, you know, in my rice cooker, I'd make a big, like serving, which I'd be like, oh, you know, it's between Jordan and I, so it's two people, or I might have it multiple meals throughout the day, so I'd make a lot more of it, and then when I go and I'm scooping the rice, you know, on the side of my chicken, my steak, my fish, whatever I'm eating, I end up getting too much. All of this is just trying to, like, stop your brain from cheating. It's kind of like, the way I see it is, you know when you're doing an exercise and you can't lift the weight, your body is gonna kind of try to cheat the way up. Your body's always natural tendency is to do the path of least resistance. So it's very good at tricking you and talking yourself, almost like bartering or negotiating with yourself to get, you know, in the case of exercise, worse form to get the way up. Or in the case of food, 
tricking yourself or telling yourself that it's okay. You'll do you'll do the cardio later. Oh, you walked 10,000 steps today. You deserve it. Or that workout is extra hard. You deserve it. Blah, 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 blah. Because it's trying to get more food because it thinks you're starving. Again, your brain doesn't know you're dieting down to, to get a six pack and look good on the beach or a men's physique show or whatever. No, it thinks you're on a deserted island and you're dying and it will do whatever it takes, even if that means tricking you in order to get more food. So whatever you can do to kind of combat that, it's a big help. Protein sources, very basic, boring stuff. We got chicken breast, good old skinless, boneless, honestly tasteless. Unfortunately, you guys might be wondering like, uh, Igor, like what other protein sources do you eat? I don't have any right now, I think, but uh, tilapia, so fish, that's a good one. Uh, beef, these days I'm not doing too much because unfortunately most cuts of beef are just too high in fat. Like I would love to have like, a New York strip or a ribeye or something like that. I can't do that because too much fat. Pretty much the only real cut of, the only type of beef I eat would be, I guess, extra, extra lean ground beef. It's like, what is it? Like 95.5, 97.3, something like that. For the most part, unfortunately, it really is chicken. Uh, it is eggs, egg whites. Uh, Jordan makes tuna salad, which I despise, but she, for some reason, is in love with it. It's salad with tuna, though. I want, it, I want it to be clear that it's not mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. It's not like tuna salad, like tuna salad sandwich. It's literally just like a salad with like zesty Italian dressing and tuna. It is the cleanest, healthiest thing I've ever... Mm, it's so good. It's four to ten. Just tuna or uh, this one is pink salmon kind of underrated, still pretty good. Also, one of the benefits is that salmon, unlike tuna, especially albacore tuna, there is no actual risk of mercury. I mean, the actual chances of you having like a mercury overdose from tuna is still unlikely, but I mean, if you have like a can or two cans of tuna all day, every day, indefinitely, and especially albacore, which has more, I think around three to four times more mercury than regular skipjack tuna, potentially, I mean, I guess maybe, it could be a problem, but yeah, canned fish, really good. Sometimes I'll just crack one of these. I give the tuna water to Peachy, my dog, and she just flips her shit every time because it's like, it's a like crack for her. And then I'll have that easy 30, 35 grams of protein and it takes you like, what, two minutes to eat? No, it doesn't taste delicious, but okay, yeah, it's not supposed to. Welcome to contest prep. You're doing what needs to be done, not like, mm, but you know, I want to have the this and the that. Shut up, put it in your mouth. Oh, this is great. I've talked about this in previous videos. This is tater tots, but they're not potato. They are cauliflower. So they're called veggie tots. Really, really good way. Sometimes I'm craving like crap. I am craving French fries. I am craving, I'm craving junk food. This is a nice, a nice alternative. And also technically a vegetable. A lot of frozen fruits. Uh, I get cherries and I'll just take these, pop them in a bowl, let it sit there for like 30 minutes, defrost, and I'll eat like 200 grams of that. Sliced strawberries and bananas. These you can make with shakes. That, and obviously as you guys know, my protein. This is the other main, probably the second or third most main protein source that I have. These days I pretty much stick to the whey. I'm not doing the clear whey as much because the one problem with the clear whey is that it's very sweet, but sometimes it's almost too sweet. So if I have two scoops, like, I can't drink it. It's just like, it's like I'm drinking sugar. It's like, I think I'm turning into an old man. My dad warned me about this when I was a kid. He's like, Igor, when you're a kid, you like candy and this and that. And when you're an old man, your taste buds shift. You start hating sweets and liking coffee and beer and all this bitter stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And now it's happening. Uh, so I can't, I can't have too much clear away, which unfortunately means I'm limited somewhat in the protein uh, intake aspect. So this helps a lot because this isn't, I think in my opinion, it's not nearly as sweet. I've been having usually one to two scoops per day. Usually I do one maybe in a post-workout shake and then one I mix into my oatmeal for the mornings. But again, you'll see that in the the next section of this video. Did you throw away the soup? Yeah, I finally did it. I finally threw away the soup that Jordan made and left in the fridge for four weeks. There was just a little, there was just a little left. There was like three liters of it oh yeah i didn't like this one time okay yeah. uh we got uh jam i put these on the plain rice cakes or sometimes if i make protein pancakes rarely uh, i get the no sugar added so this is surprisingly good it's like 20 calories per tablespoon greek yogurt really basic stuff i usually alternate between this and cottage cheese i'll get like one of these every other week depending on what i'm feeling like i am a basic guy sometimes when i'm like fuck it i need protein i will go and jordan can attest no, to this it's so gross I will just eat like 300 grams of this with a spoon, 
down it with water, and that's it. I'll be like, okay, I don't... I just don't have time to sit there and make some elaborate meal. Maybe if I did, dieting would be easier. So, fuck it. Maybe I'm wrong. But I just, like, I, I get the food. I put it here. That's it. Ah, oh, these are great. Baby Bell cheese. Awesome. If you need some protein, each of these is, like, 5, 6 grams, 50 calories. I get the light version. That's the light blue one. These, in my opinion, are a major key. I'll have, like, probably, like, two or so of these uh, per day. Th this is the junk for me at this point in the diet. This is when you know you're deep into the diet. When my junk is... Chocolate digestive biscuits. This is like the shit they give babies. These little goldfish crackers are also very good. One of these bags is like, what, 130 calories? Again, this is a lot easier for you to track and eat within your diet as opposed to you getting like a big family-sized bag of chips and then being like, oh, I'll weigh out 100 calories. Bullshit. You're going to do that and then you're going to go back and get three more handfuls and next thing you know, you messed up your diet. So actually having portion sizes makes it... Makes life overall. You threw it. Oh, God. She, she always does when, this. She hates when I drop food with She always throws everything. Oh, my God. The velocity of me putting it down. You always smash everything. I'll eat that one. Okay, can we go? I'm really hungry. You're hungry? I'm so hungry. Okay, so we're going to go. And we're <laughs> going to eat a meal. And I'm going to show you guys some of the meals I eat because the next section of the video is... So, we've got like 12, 13. I've lost count of how many meals I want to get through, so... Let's just jump right into it. First off, we got breakfast, and this is going to be, I guarantee you guys, it is very boring, but this is a big staple of mine. It's literally just 250 grams of uh, liquid egg whites, and then I have protein oatmeal. What I do is I take the exact same amount every single time, 60 grams of regular, like, quick one-minute oats. I microwave that. Uh, for like a minute with some water. Then I add in one scoop, 35 grams of my protein's chocolates, the whey. And then I kind of like mix that up into kind of like a little, little bit of like a porridge protein. You call it prot meal, protein oatmeal. And then sometimes I will use uh, some fruit in there as well. For example, on this example, I put some, this is like about 100, 150 grams of frozen berries, high carb, high protein, extremely low fats protein porridge mix and then I have some water on the side. I always want to have at least one serving of fruit slash vegetables even with my uh, with my breakfast. This case I'm just doing like a pear. Sometimes I would do uh, maybe like a small banana. Literally I know it's very standard but like it fucking works. I saw I believe it was uh, Chris Bumstead doing this in one of his um, contest preps. A big benefit for me is that it's a very light meal. Anything with meats or especially like steak or something, it's a little bit of like a heavy meal in the sense that after I eat it, I kind of feel like I ate a brick in my stomach and I need to like sit down or something. No, this I could eat it. Then 30 minutes later, I'm at the gym. No problem. And I know that some of you guys are going to say like, you know, breakfast, don't you usually intermittent fast? Some days I do, some days I don't. I will be honest, these days I'm having quite a bit of hunger as early as like 10 or 11 a.m. And as long as the meal is high protein and sufficiently low in calories, which this is, occasionally I have a breakfast, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't buy into some kind of a certain dietary strategy or dietary dogma like intermittent fasting and think, I need to do this forever until the end of time because some guy with a six pack on YouTube told me, no, fuck that. If it fits your calories, it fits your macros, it's overall relatively clean food with fruits and vegetables, and fiber, it's all good. Let's see a couple examples of lunch. This is actually super basic. Uh, Mr. Sub, one thing that I've been doing, this is a major key in my opinion. When you get a sub, ask them to rip out some of that like spongy bready stuff on the inside. Number one, it's gonna noticeably decrease the carbohydrates. I have no idea how much unfortunately, but I would, I would say at least like a quarter or a third reduction in overall carbs in your sub. And also, honestly, I think it tastes better because there's too much bread. The bread to meat to vegetable ratio is suboptimal in my opinion. When I have like normal subs now, which I haven't done in like probably over a year, but if I were to, it feels like I'm eating a bread sandwich with a little bit of meat on the side. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I vary between what I get. If I really want to be lean, I'll get just double turkey, so regular sliced turkey breast. Um, there's also like a grilled chicken version that I get. It's not too bad. This one is just basic as hell. It's just, this is a uh, grilled chicken. We got some pepper and mushroom medley. It's literally just peppers, mushrooms, and a little bit of soy sauce. And then one minute rice. Uh, this is like their long grain 
uh, long grain flavor. So the rice is like 230 calories, give or take. Again, I'm a really big fan of these minute rice just because it's like these individual pods. So it's very easy for portion control. This is all you got. If you want more, you're gonna have to do the walk of shame over to the kitchen, microwave yourself another minute rice, blah, blah, blah. You're probably not gonna do that. Uh, this one was a meal. I just went out with my family. I think this was like on my sister's birthday a few months ago. And um, again, when you're eating out, this is like a Japanese restaurant. I get clients ask me this a lot. They're like, Igor, how do I eat at a restaurant and not obliterate my calories and still stick to my diet? You don't have to get the double cheese, double bacon cheeseburger with the, you know, a side of fries or poutine and a beer. You could get the grilled chicken sandwich with a Caesar salad and a Diet Coke. The, you're still eating out, but there's obliterating your diet, just dropping a nuke on it. And then there's like something which might be not perfectly fitting your diet, especially if you're eating out, but it's okay. This is an example of that. Grilled chicken teriyaki, white meat, so it's breast. It's a big serving of protein. It was like 200 grams or something. We got some veggies, which is like what? Cabbage, broccoli, which is pretty much non-existent calories. Some teriyaki sauce, which is not that great, but I will factor that in, like 80 calories just for the teriyaki sauce. And then I have on the side, just a six piece maki roll of salmon. That's it. And it's, that's literally just like a little bit of rice, some salmon, high protein, a little bit of fat, fantastic meal. Miso soup, which is like 40 calories, and then a cup of rice, which I actually didn't even eat because my rice, my carb source, was the, the maki roll itself. Don't just use eating out as an excuse to say, fuck it, YOLO, and blow your diet up. Uh, this is another example, also kind of sticking to the Japanese sushi uh, theme. This was something interesting that I always wanted to try and I finally did it. I decided I'm gonna make my own sushi bowl or poke bowl. I literally looked online and apparently you can eat raw salmon. I do not recommend you do so if you just go to your regular grocery store because there is a chance of it being contaminated with parasites and then you're gonna get sick and shit your pants for three days. But if you get certain ones which are kind of like sushi grade, or sashimi grade or something like that. Apparently the way the fish was preserved after killing it, like they flash freezed it, which killed all the parasites. It wasn't that much, it was like 26 bucks a pound, which isn't that crazy high. And that's it. And I just did this, I did like 200 grams of salmon. I did half an avocado, a little bit of sushi rice. It's that Cal Rose rice. Uh, then we got this, this one was super basic. It's literally just I had like this uh, frozen bag of shrimp and scallops and then I just cooked that. I literally like boiled it a little bit to like to actually cook it and then I just threw it on uh, a pan with some teriyaki and soy sauce for a few minutes just to brown it and grill it a little bit. And on the side I had once again just a single serving of herbs, whatever the flavor is, minute made rice. Very simple, bit of carbs, and then a fuck ton of protein and a little bit of healthy fat. This meal was a little expensive because I went through the entire bag in like one meal, but I mean, even then it's not that bad. The bag was like, what, eight bucks? Still way cheaper than eating out and it tastes fantastic and it has like four times the protein of any meal that you're usually going to get when you are eating out. And as you can tell, my dog is just miring hard. Okay, next up we got dinner. This one is just basic as hell. I'm just eating at my desk, probably taking a break in between work. Like, look, sometimes it's good and it's elaborate and sometimes it's basic as hell, but you know what, that's fine. Especially when you're dieting this long and this hard, suddenly even something as plain as this where it's like a baked chicken breast, some rice and a, and a sad little salad with a Diet Coke. This for me is like mwah, mm, chef's kiss, ratatouille. This is the shit. This one was just chicken and soup, even more basic. Uh, Jordan had made like a can of tomato soup or something and she had a little bit left over and I thought, all right, I'll have that as my a little bit, my extremely low carb, low calorie side dish on the side of a chicken. Uh, then we got everyone's favorite, honestly, just a ribeye and some rice. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really eat beef that much anymore, again, because it's just way too many calories. But sometimes if I really kind of like am conservative with my fat intake and my overall calorie intake, Earlier in the day, I've saved up a little bit. It's almost like a piggy bank. I've saved the calories for a rainy day, or in this case, for a, for a hungry dinner. Yeah, I will get myself, I'll grill myself up a ribeye on the cast iron skillet. And then we got this meal, which was actually, I had this, this was today. This was, we were at the mall, uh, we were shopping. I had to buy a suit for something, which I'll talk about in a not too distant uh, future video. 
And uh, Jordan was like running around going to 17 different stores. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm starving. I went to the food court and I got this was Korea. It's like this little Korean barbecue fast food place in the mall. And they have a lot of options and a lot of them are just shit for calories. You got the fried chicken, you got the garlic potatoes, you got the this, you got the that. But I tried to make the, the again, the guys, it's the, that's the name of the game. Make the best possible choice that you can. If you have to eat out because you're away from the house for multiple hours at a time, you don't have any food with you, fine, eat out. But again, you could still make decent choices. I got, this is just regular white steamed rice. Then I got kimchi bean sprouts, which is like nothing calorie wise. And then I got, uh, this is spicy tofu. Again, not overly high in calorie, probably a little bit of fat because it was probably grilled and that's how it was cooked but also a decent serving of protein, a decent vegan serving of protein. And then we got just uh, regular beef and chicken. Now the beef was probably a little bit higher in fat, but that's okay. I factored that in uh, to my macros. And then also the chicken, this was chicken thighs. So a little bit higher in fat than the chicken breast, but also still not too bad. Some people demonize dark meat. Like it's the worst thing in the world. It's not like a hundred, like in a hundred gram serving of like dark meat chicken, we're talking drumsticks or thighs, we'll have like maybe six to seven grams of fat more than a chicken breast. It's not the end of the world. It's still a far cry from what I mentioned earlier, which is like a 50 gram serving of fat coming from like a juicy ribeye or New York strip or, or something like that. You getting like seven grams of fat because you had dark meat instead of white meat. It's not the end of the world. Overall, again, not a bad meal. It's just chicken, rice, some steak, and then like that's it. Probably the worst thing here is like the teriyaki sauce or maybe like the, the grilled and fried tofu. But even then, it's not that bad. Overall, this whole meal was probably like 800 calories, a lot of it being protein. Considering I am eating out at the mall, I could do a lot worse. So guys, yeah, that is about it. That is how I am usually eating on a day-to-day -day basis these days. Although I will mention that I am starting to clean it up even more. Even now, like even as conservative as some of these meals are, I have to start it, you know, I've started taking it even further, reducing the fruit intake in the mornings because I can't handle the extra 20, 25, 30 grams of carbs and sugars coming from a banana or a, uh, going to half an avocado instead of a full avocado, going to tilapia instead of salmon for the lower fat and lower overall calorie intake, going to turkey subs instead of a grilled chicken or a whatever sub because I need to, again, reduce an additional 100, 150, 200 calories in some cases, depending on the sauces, the size, the whatever. Um, just stuff like that. Just starting to clean it up a little bit. And obviously on top of that is just, I pretty much doubled my, my cardio capacity. But that is of course the name of the game. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Let me know if you enjoyed me kind of walking you through these sporadic random examples and maybe if you enjoyed this more than the traditional full day of eating. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And as always, I appreciate you guys for stopping by and I'll see you next week, which will be eight weeks out, which is two months out, which is holy shit, it is crunch time.